Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be matching fragrances to some of my favorite books. A couple of months ago I made a book called Matching My Favorite Books to Perfumes. I have continued reading ever since I posted that video and I've continued developing more books that I really like. You guys really liked that video, wanted a part two, so I figured today I'd come back and make another video on more books that I loved and some fragrances that I would recommend based on these books. So without further ado, let's get into it. <music> I think I only actually have one of these here beside me as like a physical copy. The rest I'll just put photos on screen because a lot of them I read as audiobooks. Starting off, I wanted to talk about a book that I have not read and I frankly don't know that much about, but there is a passage from this book that I think about on a daily basis, multiple times a day. And I haven't even actually read this full book, but I think about this passage and I've looked into this author and I by no means, you know, I still need to read this book. My friend Max, if you're watching this, Max is always recommending me to read this book and I need to read it, but I'm gonna preemptively match it to a perfume. The book that I'm talking about is called The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. I believe that this book was written when she was writing for a fashion magazine or like it follows a main character that works for a fashion magazine. This will be the most poor explanation of this book because I haven't read it. I've just looked into it a little bit, but basically she's like, she just kind of doesn't really know what to do with her life. And she's young and she's working in a place that's kind of taking advantage of her or something like that. I don't know, she's not, she's young. She's having troubles. There is this passage of her, this fig tree. And she says, I saw my life branching out before me like the green fig tree in the story. From every tip of every branch, like a fat purple fig, a wonderful future beckoned and winked. One fig was a husband and a happy home and children. And another fig was a famous poet and another fig was a brilliant professor. And Another fig was E.G., the amazing editor. And another fig was Europe and Africa and South America. Beyond and above these figs were many more figs that I couldn't quite make out. I saw myself sitting in the crotch of this fig tree, starving to death, just because I couldn't make up my mind which one of the figs I would choose. I wanted each and every one of them, but choosing one meant losing all the rest. And as I sat there, unable to decide, the figs began to wrinkle and go black, and one by one, they plopped to the ground by my feet. All the time. Like, I think about this all the time. I just graduated university and I do not know what to do with my life. I feel like I have to make all these decisions. It's the time for me to decide these things. So every day I'm constantly thinking of this passage of this book. So what I wanted to describe this was a new fragrance called Pretty Day from a brand called Noise. They just launched June 6th. This fragrance is called Pretty Day, but it is anything but it. The notes are salted fig, eucalyptus, ocean air, sea-soaked woods, Baltic amber. This is the perfect scent for when you are so anxious and your brain won't stop moving and you're having a bad day. This is just the scent of like someone who is meditating in the most idyllic, perfect place. Like I'm just picturing myself sitting on the edge of a cliff, just taking in the world. Meanwhile, my brain is all cracked into different pieces like this. And it also has a fig note. It's a very fig forward fragrance. So this is to me so bell jar, so Sylvia Plath, but in the most tranquil, uplifting and refreshing way. Like I'm literally eating a fig on the coast, smelling the salted air, watching the waves crash, just breathing. That's what it smells like. So good. If only that's where my mindset was at right now, but one day we'll get there soon. Next book that I wanted to talk about is a series that I've been reading. And this is exciting for me because I'm not a fantasy reader. I didn't grow up reading fantasy. The closest thing I got to that was like Divergent, the Ugly series, stuff like that, but I never really got into like fantasy. I watched Lord of the Rings and part of it went over my head, you know, like I don't understand the tropes and stuff like that. My friends were reading the Throne of Glass series and I decided, you know what, maybe I'll read it and then I'll have something to talk about with them. I forgot to give you the synopsis of this book. I just started talking about it. So let me tell you what this book is about. Also, that is what's behind me. Throne of Glass, I'm just gonna tell you what the first book is about because I'm on book four, but I don't wanna give spoilers. So Throne of Glass is about this woman named Selena Sardothian and she is the most highly trained and skilled assassin in the land. And she's in jail because she's an assassin. One day, this really hot prince and his really hot guard show up to her jail and they're like, hey girly poo, we will free you from jail because the king wants you to compete in this competition. The king is looking for someone to be his specific assassin. The king wants to hire you, but you gotta compete against all the other dangerous people in the land first. It's a competition. She goes with the hot prince and his hot guard and she gets to live in the castle. And basically she gets to like meet all the other dangerous people there she has like a fake name so they don't know that she's Selena Sardothian. And there's like a little bit of love triangle. Oh my God, it's such a good book. It's such a good book. And I'm on book four now. Like the plot thickens. This book is so good and I'm so obsessed. Like I'm literally on book four and I don't really read series. Like I haven't read a series since I was in grade seven. Anyways, such a good book. That's what it's about. Right, Coco? So for this video, I found this perfume, Witchy Woo by Vareo. There's several reasons that I grabbed this fragrance. For one, 
there's witches in this book and this fragrance is called witchy woo but that's not actually the reason i picked it it just happens that way also there won't be any spoilers except the fact that there's witches that doesn't come until later in the book but I don't think it really spoils anything. Sorry if it does, shit. There is a significance to like certain stones in this series. And anyways, Vareo has Herkimer diamonds put in their fragrances. If you look at this, there is a little Herkimer diamond rolling around. And basically they get all these Herkimer diamonds and they send them off to this woman who's a healer and she charges the diamonds. And they said that they spend like a ton of money in shipping, just to send it to this healer who lives in Hawaii, I think. And then send it back to, I think the UK where they manufacture these, which is like so much money. But I still think it's really cool. If you want anything from Vareo, there's Emma X Vareo for 15% off. I don't know if it still works. Let me know. Part of the reason I chose this perfume was because it's something I wouldn't have liked based on the notes, but I love it. It's really addictive. This is a patchouli fragrance and I don't like patchouli. I'm not a big patchouli girl. If you read me the notes, patchouli, incense, stuff like that, I would have just ran away. It's so long lasting. It's so nice. It's so witchy. It gets me in that like October mood. There's a little bit of rose. Like it's almost along the lines of like portrait of a lady, but it also gives like Stevie Nicks. This is so addictive and so, so so good, like such a pleasant surprise. And part of the reason I got this is because one, witches, two, stones, and three, pleasant surprise. This is my first fantasy book. And then this, I'm not usually a big fan of patchouli in sensi sense, but this one is very, very good and I really like it. So that's kind of why I chose this one for the series. The next fragrance I wanted to talk about and this matching, I feel like I could have done better, but this is what I landed on, so that's where we're gonna be, is a book called Bear Town, and this is a book from one of my favorite authors, Frederick Bachman. This book is chicken soup for the soul. This is the equivalent of chicken noodle soup. It has some heavy topics in the book, and it follows so many characters, but it's just such a good book. I read this book, and I read Us Against You, the second book. I listened to them as audiobooks. Again, I'm a huge, huge audiobook person. I cried so much reading this book because the way that he writes is so pretty. I also really, really like A Man Called Uva, which is another book of his. That was the first one that I read by him and it's actually probably my favorite, but I love Bear Town as a series. It follows a little tiny town in, I think, Northern Sweden. The whole pride and claim to fame of this town is they have this little hockey team and it's all like 14 year olds. So they're too young to be put on a pedestal, but there's a bunch of people. There's like, again, it's been forever since I read this, but I think there's like one son who's maybe like his dad's a cop or something like that. And then there's like the coach who's a really nice guy and there's one son whose mom is like the janitor of the rink so you get to hear all of like the socioeconomic backgrounds of the family and the interactions between the parents and the kids it's been a long time since i've read it but it's basically about just people and stories and life and it's so good and so heartwarming and so heartbreaking at the same time big big fan of this book look up trigger warnings if you read it i could have done better i probably could have chosen something that goes with the assignment a little more but what i chose is creme couture because this book is nostalgic. I mean, I grew up as like the little sister of a brother who played hockey and my dad played hockey. My dad was my hockey coach too when I played hockey. So it's just like nostalgic. And so I picked Creme Couture by Sniff. I'm a 10 for 10% off if you want to get it because this is a croissant fragrance. It smells like a croissant and jam and something about it, like it's just so simple, but it's so good. And Bear Town, I wouldn't say it's simple. There's so many stories and like, it's so complex, but you just read it and it's simple. It's, it's kind of, heavy and hard but it's like humanity and there's a nostalgic factor to this fragrance and both to the book for me both of them i think are nice and comforting and something i go back to i literally have this in the laundry detergent and the scent booster for my laundry both are so good by the way I did my laundry with this yesterday love this love frederick bachman's writing big 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 fan of both of these so bear town i matched to Creme Couture by Sniff. My family's having dinner right now and I need to join them, but I'm gonna do one more really, really quick. I preface this one by saying this one is not one of my favorite books, but it's one that impacted me and it's one called Big Swiss. I picked this up because I saw the cover at my local bookstore and I was like, that's a really interesting cover. I read the back and I was like, oh, that's really interesting. I left, I didn't buy it, but then I went online and everyone's reading Big Swiss and I was like, oh my God, that's crazy because I didn't know anything about it when I saw it in store. I got it on audiobook and I listened to this book and it's really funny. Basically, Big Swiss is about, there's a man, he's a therapist and he's writing an autobiography. And by autobiography, what he means by that is he is recording all of the tapes of when he is talking to his clients. He will record the tape of their conversation. And then he's having this woman, Greta, listen to the tapes and transcribe this into a book. So we're following Greta, the woman who's listening to this. And this book is set nowhere other than Hudson, New York. That is where the Maker Hotel is. And that's where I was last week. And it's really funny. I've been to the Maker Hotel twice 
And the book is all about Hudson. And it's really funny because I've been there. I love the maker. The maker is one of my favorite fragrance brands. And they even name drop, like they don't say the maker, but they talk about this like converted brothel that's turned into a hotel. They talked about the maker, but they didn't name it. So reading the book was really interesting. And then when I went back to the maker, I was just like thinking about it. But yeah, they talk about all the like coffee shops. There are people that she writes about in the book that are actually people in the town. As for the book, I thought it was really, really funny toward the beginning. And then it kind of fell off off toward the end for me. Definitely look up trigger warnings if you read it. I found that it just kind of lost me toward the end, but either way, I will match it to one of my favorite fragrances from the maker, which is Lover. The book actually has a bit of a love story in it, like some self-discovery and self-aware moments. And this fragrance is very, very lactonic. It's super fig-y and sandalwood-y. I mean, I'm a big fan of the like lactonic elements and I don't know, I just, I like the book. I don't have any way to connect the fact that this is lactonic to the book. I'm gonna go eat dinner and I'll come back later. And the next book, this is one of my favorite books. This was so popular back when I read it in like 2021. It's called The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. This book follows this woman named Addie LaRue. A young French woman in 1714 makes a bargain with the dark that makes her immortal. I don't remember exactly why, but this causes her to be forgotten by everyone she meets. So immediately, Every person in her life doesn't know who she is. Any person that she'll meet, she can have an interaction and talk with them. But as soon as she's out of eyesight, they don't remember who she is. And this book goes on and describes her whole life. She's traveling. In the first maybe 100 pages, people described it as like, you feel the years that she's going through. I didn't really feel them. Like, honestly, I was listening to this as an audiobook during the summer and just loving it. And I love the buildup because when you finally get to a point, this is a very, very light spoiler, but eventually she has to meet someone who remembers her. And when you get to that point, it's so magical, I was crying. And there's also like a really interesting kind of like sexy relationship between Addie and Luke, who's like the dark bad guy. And they kind of have this little flirtationship that I'm kind of here for and like, tell me why I'm here for it. Like he's literally the devil, but like I'm here for him. And it was a really good book. I really like this book. Fragrance that I picked for this is Sparkling Joe from Wilhelm Perfumery, which is a new fragrance to my collection. It is so beautiful. A delicious snapshot of Paris in the roaring 20s, inspired by the iconic star of the Folie Berger, Josephine. Baker. All night long from the evening until the next day, Sparkling Joe will set the tempo of your emotions and desires. Each day will only be better than the last. So it's champagne, bergamot, juniper, pear, ginger, and bread. Honestly, this perfume is more like party, social get together. There's also like that roaring 20s aspect. And I think we do get to the 20s in the book. She's literally living from like 1700s to modern day. So you kind of get to live through that whole era and she's just kind of beside it. Again, it was so long ago that I read it, but I'm pretty sure that they write her in to being right beside big events happening and she's just right there chilling, like part of it. Nobody's gonna remember her. The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue reminds me of a movie called The Age of Adeline, which stars Blake Lively. So it's kind of similar, but like not really. Adeline is immortal and she doesn't age, but people remember her in the movie. They're not related. It's just interesting that they have the same name. There's this scene where it's like midnight on New Year's Eve and she's in, I think like San Francisco in this beautiful building and it's this beautiful 1920s-ish flapper kind of scene. I just think of that when I think of like immortality and when I think of like New Year's, I think of this scene scene from Age of Adeline. I mix Age of Adeline and The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue in my mind because they're sort of similar. Anyways, the book is a really, really, really good book. And in my mind, this just makes sense. So I'm choosing this fragrance. This fragrance is more party-like, whereas The Invisible Life is a little more lonely. There's a lot of glamor in the book because she's kind of beside all that. So that's what I would say. Okay, I have two books left. One of them is a thriller and one of them is an autobiography. Let's start with the autobiography, Down the Drain. Down the Drain is an iconic book written by Miss Julia Fox. It is so well written. Julia Fox obviously wrote it. I didn't really know much about her. I followed her on TikTok and I loved her takes. I thought she was really funny. Down the Drain is the funniest, weirdest, most effed up book. And get the audiobook because Julia Fox narrates it and listening to her talk, I feel like Julia Fox is my friend. Like, I feel like we're friends now. That book needed to be written. It deserved to be written. I think it was like Jack Edwards made a video right when Down the Drain came out talking about how when he went to Barnes & Noble, there was no copies left. Even though it said that they had copies left, people had stolen them, which is so Julia Fox, basically she grew up really, really poor. Because of that, she had to be crafty. I think she lived on like a boat in New York City, like a really shitty boat, but her neighbors had money. And so she would wire up the cable to the neighbor's place when they were gone so she could watch TV. And she has always been the smartest, like two steps ahead person. And her life is so interesting. The things that she has been through, her friendships, her losses. She's a mother now, so well written. People talked about it when it came out, but honestly, like it's one of the best autobiographies ever written. It is vulgar and it's so good. And the fragrance I wanted to match it to is also from Noise, which is a new brand. This is their best perfume in my opinion. And this is in fact, one of the best perfumes I've ever smelled. It is called Unmute and this fragrance, 
honestly, like the notes, if I were to just read the notes, I'd be like, oh, it's another ambery vanilla scent. But it's so good. If you have seen any hype for Tihoda by Indult, which is like the most beautiful, most magical vanilla, which it is, I have it. This is that, but better, except it's different. Tihoda is like almost cotton candy vanilla. This is like grown up, sexy, one of the most addictive fragrances I have ever smelled. This has ceased, Spanish ceased, which is like labnum. Oh my God. Amber, Madagascar vanilla. This is the most beautiful, like warm, spicy, sexy, and it's called Unmute. It's supposed to be loud and unfiltered and it's so Julia Fox. Honestly, I feel like Julia Fox might be like a little more like sexy leathery, but this is, this is just addictive and I'm addicted to that book. I'm addicted to Julia Fox. I follow, she's a fan account on Instagram called Julia Fox University and they post her street looks. She is funny. I love her looks. I'm obsessed with this perfume. It is so, so good. You'll hear about it on TikTok if you follow me. Finally, the last book that I want to talk about is one called The Only One Left by Riley Seger. I have read um, two books from this man and this is by far, like by a landslide, better than the other one that I read. The other one I read was House Across the Lake. Anyways, The Only One Left, so good. Again, I listened to it in audiobook. I would just clean my room all day, every day to have something to do. Like my house was spotless when I was reading this book because I needed my listening time. It was sacred because I needed to know what was happening next. Picture it. It's the 80s, I think. This is like, ask me about a class I just took. This girl gets a job as a personal support worker for a woman named Lenora, Lenora Hope. And Lenora Hope lives in this really fancy mansion that is like up and it is basically falling off a cliff. Like this mansion is set on the cliff, but like one earthquake, it's gone. It's down in the water, okay? It's this creepy ass mansion. And basically this woman grew up in the town with this house and there was such a crazy bad thing that happened in this house that like her, all of her friends had this rhyme about it where they were like, Lenora Hope killed her family and then like whatever. And so Lenora Hope is like everyone's version of Bloody Mary. Like she's like terrifying. Like she's a really bad girl. She killed her family, like this whole thing dangerous woman but that happened like forever ago so now lenora hope she's like 90 or like 80 or something she's really old because so much time has passed she is like severely disabled because i think she's had like multiple strokes and stuff so at this point she doesn't have a lot of control over her body all that she has is like she can move like one finger and like she can like look around but she needs help with her daily tasks so anyways this woman becomes lenora hope's personal support worker and so she's working there like, the maid or something who's like really creepy and this girl has to like move into the house and lenora starts writing to the girl about her story of like her life and she because she has this typewriter and so she starts like writing to the girl to tell her what happened so basically you are just living this girl's life while she's living in this house and she's hearing footsteps at night but then she'll go in and Lenora's just chilling in bed and she's like who is walking around like it is creepy she does not trust this woman so she's like trying to play games with her to be like i'm gonna drop this snow globe in your hand let's see if you catch it so anyways she's like i believe that you can move i believe that you're faking it and the book is so interesting because meanwhile she's like got her little typewriter and she's giving her a little story time session but she only gets like chapter by chapter and sometimes she'll get to a bit and lenora will be like i want to go to bed except she won't talk but she just like won't write anymore and so you're like tell me more and so anyways it's so interesting you're kind of trying to figure out like what happened why did you kill your family and there's kind of this air of danger it's a really good book i was on the edge of my seat and yeah it's very mysterious and very good um and i was supposed to match it to, to perfume what did i match it to again these perfumes make no sense but I have free will and this perfume I've kind of been wanting to talk about on my channel because it's really really good <laughs> and so I'm making this like really kind of far apart connection. This fragrance is from a brand called Gabar. They're from Myanmar and this fragrance is called Lul slash Lidlo. This perfume is so good. This is like the milkiest sandalwood scent with orange blossom, cherry, red apple, black tea. Honestly the opening with the cherry is so good and this is so lactonic and milky. It's supposed to represent like an unwind, a letting go, connect Connecting with others, self-expansion, which is so different from this book. But the reason that I'm matching it is because this perfume is just so good. And it's just got a lot of things that I really like. And also the sandalwood note is so strong and it reminds me of like the creaky old house that's probably all wooden and like probably just like the smell of the wood in the house, I would say. Honestly, I just really wanted a chance to talk about this perfume. So that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I don't know if I smell the notes. It's kind of like a bit, it's like a milky sandalwood note with notes, like tiny notes of cherry and tiny notes of apple and a little bit of like orange blossom and stuff. But I don't really get that. I don't know. It's 
just like really, really nice. We've come to the end of the rope. So if you want to know anything more about me reading, follow me on Goodreads. Also follow me on Instagram because I tend to update you guys on there with what I'm up to, including what I'm reading. So follow me there. And thank you so much for watching this video. I'm just like honored that you guys care about me talking about things other than perfume, even though I'm still talking about perfume. If you have any book recommendations, please drop them in the down below. Right now I'm so obsessed with the show Bridgerton that I'm like, should I read the books? But I've heard they're absolutely bad. So thank you all so much for watching my video. I love you guys. Um, follow me on Instagram, please. I'm so fun there. And if TikTok gets banned, I need you guys to follow me on Instagram because I want to keep posting. So please follow me on Instagram, perfumerism. Also, I might have a giveaway soon. Yeah, that's all I really wanted to say. Thanks for watching my videos. Love you guys. See you later.